Hello and welcome to Homeopathy Simplified, um, a podcast and video blog. Uh, today we're going to do episode 11 and it's on homeopathic remedies. What are they? How are they made? Etc. And um, just about me, I'm a homeopath and a, a Bowen therapist. And I first discovered homeopathy through my father, John DeMonte, who was uh, one of uh, the main teachers in homeopathy in the 60s and 70s. And I was very fortunate to study through his students, and I really feel a strong connection to his career. I also became a Bowen therapist and developed a a practice focusing on chronic pain and disease. Now, after 27 years, I've come full circle and I'm ready to share my knowledge. Um, Hopefully making the complex simple and shining a path through a forest of ideas and misconceptions. This is my father, John Andre de Monti. He passed in 1975. I was 12. And um, he taught um, someone I knew in uh, his life, uh, Misha Norland, who developed one of the most important schools of homeopathy in, uh, in Europe and around the world, actually. Sorry, the picture's a bit fuzzy. Anyway, today's um, lesson is about homeopathic remedies. And what is a remedy? In the dictionary, uh, it means a medicine, application, or treatment that relieves or cures a disease. And then what I like is the second meaning, something that corrects or counteracts. And that's really uh, what a homeopathic remedy does. So we've got many, many types of remedies, and I just want to give a bit, bit of background about them. So prepared homeopathic remedies, something you might buy in a store, Um, are used by classical homeopaths. And classical homeopaths are so named because their practice is to prescribe one single homeopathic remedy rather than a group of remedies or many remedies at the same time. And, you know, we've gone into some of that in previous podcasts. So um, the source materials for the remedies are wide ranging from the plant kingdom, mineral kingdom, animal kingdom. And also we use unusual things like disease matter, such as rotten meat uh, is a homeopathic remedy. Uh, We use bacteria, fungi, viruses, and these are named as uh, nosodes uh, and sarcodes. Other sources of homeopathic remedies could be energetic sources such as electricity, x-ray, magnetic pole north and south. These are known as imponderables. So these are made into various potencies and they're then medicated in liquid form onto either sugar globules, little round balls of sugar, or lactose uh, powders, which is less common nowadays, or they're dispensed in liquid form. The most common are uh, sugar balls, and that's because they're so stable. In fact, I still use in my uh, kit remedies that are hundreds of years old, so they are still active after such a long time. So some of uh, the examples of remedies that you might know or have read about, from vegetable source, we have Aconitum napolis, known as aconite, Belladonna and Cretaceous oxycantha. So these are plants and Cretaceous is a shrub. Minerals might include things like plumbum, metallicum, which is lead, and silicia terra, which is flint, essentially, silica, and zincum metallicum, which of course is zinc. Animal origins might be Apis mellifica, which is um, the honeybee. Helix tosta, which is a very unusual remedy. Um, It's a toasted snail. And toasted snail is a great remedy for slugs in the garden. Very famous these days. So then we have animals in their whole form, such as tarantula, cubensis, Cuban tarantula. Disease origins, we might use tuberculosis, syphilis, and... uh, Chickenpox is variolinum. And then imponderables I mentioned already. We even have Luna, 
which is Moonrays. Uh, I've never used it, but it's available. And so how are they made? They're made by taking the material source, such as lead, and making it into a tincture, after which successive dilutions are made. And at each step of the process of um, diluting, a process of succussion is performed. Now, succussion is the step of striking the mixture against a surface between each step of dilution. It is sometimes called dynamization or potentization. And I'll go into that a little more in a bit. So, um, potency refers to the scale of dilution, essentially. And this was first developed by Hahnemann in the 1700s. And uh, he developed a method of diluting the medicines um, one part in a hundred by taking a beaker or vial and adding 99 drops of alcohol and water and then adding one drop of the medicine, after which it would be succussed. And succussion would be literally banging it. And in a way, it's dispersing the molecules. And what's interesting now is that we can measure the molecules in millions of times dilution. Uh, It's extraordinary what you can do with technology now. So always 87% alcohol is is used because otherwise anything less would melt the sugar eventually. And uh, we often dilute these um, many, many times over. In fact, we don't now use the same, uh, use individual beakers or vials for each dilution. Um, We now do that inside one uh, container, and that's called the Korsakoff method. Sometimes you see a K after the name of the remedy. Okay, so um, I've got more details, but I don't want to overwhelm the podcast right now. So we have another scale, along with centesimal, uh, which is decimal. And decimal is one part in 10. And then centesimal, C, is uh, one part in 100. So we might say, as a homeopath, I gave the 30th potency, or the 200th potency. So that literally means we gave 30 or 200 C. The decimal scale is... um, sometimes written as X for 10, or sometimes written D for D. And, um, you know, D is very, very popular. In fact, it was uh, developed in America um, by Samuel Dubbs, a Philadelphia doctor in 1838. And uh, so lots of uh, nice history about how these were developed. Now, um, a little more on these. In uh, homeopathic construct or of how we explain remedies, we might say that uh, decimal potencies are less powerful than centesimal. So 1x is less powerful than a 1c, and uh, 2x is less powerful than a 2c, um, and so on. Um, But they are prepared in the very similar way, and um, there's no real difference. So there's a wonderful video on YouTube. If you look up Boiron and their manufacturing process, you'll see a a great video of how remedies are prepared and how precise it's, it's made. Because if it's a plant, the genus has to be precise. The volume of the Um, liquid within the plant is calculated, and it's all very, very uh, um, precise. So, um, that's really enough about remedies, really. Um, Another um, lesson we'll do on how to take a remedy, but I'll just leave you with uh, a little glimpse of the scale of uh, the remedies. You'll often find the most common is 30C in uh, pharmacies or health food stores, sometimes 200. And these are the most common um, potencies or strengths to start with. 
And what's interesting is how many different potencies you can go to. So 1M is 1,000, 10M is 10,000, 50M is 50,000, CM is 100,000, DM 500,000, MM is a million. So you go 30 to a million, and that's a lot. Um, and yeah, why would you need those different potencies? Well, like any medicine, uh, if you take a dose of a remedy a few times, or a medicine a few times, you might get used to it and not have a stronger response. So essentially, um, we use a different potency. And um, I like to think of these as frequencies on a radio dial, where you're just tuning in to a different frequency. And uh, so in my practice, often I'll go 30, 200, 1M, 10M. And if 50M and CM are less available, I might go back down again to 30 even, or other ways of making remedies last longer. So one of the reasons I think that homeopathy uh, lacks research is there's just no, no money in the, um, in the selling of remedies. There's just none. Um, I really give hats off to any pharmacy that sells homeopathic remedies or let alone makes them. But in essence, a homeopathic remedy could be made at home. And um, I would, you know, encourage people to research how to do that. There is, in fact, a homeopathic pharmacopoeia that gives directions for each medicine on how to make it. And um, that's it for today's uh, podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in and uh, talk to you later. Bye now.